Okay, 2043 to 144 was your homework last night. You did numbers 1 through 16, the teal. And uh, working with inequalities again. And the first four problems from the homework, just basic stuff we've been doing for a while. Hadn't done for a little while, granted, but uh, pretty straightforward. And then uh, numbers 11 through 16 did five more. Those last five inequalities that were quadratic. And uh, so we'll take a look at those in just a moment. Bueno, see. All right. Well, let's take a look at number one. Um, like any other equation, this inequality will solve much the same way. I've got parentheses. I've got to get rid of parentheses. Abby, I need to. Um, divide by four. Actually, I could divide away the 4. I was thinking of distributing, uh, distributing, distributing the 4. I'm on the wrong syllable. Uh, distributing the 4, but I could divide the 4 since you, you know, if you know 92 divided by 4. Oh, I distributed. You did distribute. Well, we could do 23 that way, or we could distribute 890 to 12x is greater than 92. Uh, either way, um, let's take it from here since I'm guessing that's what most of you probably did. Uh, then what, Brandon? Like I did it the other way. Oh. <laughs> Subtract the 8 away to get 84. So you have a negative 12x is greater than 84. And then finally, Maddie. Anytime we divide by a negative class, we have to switch the inequality around. So instead of greater than becomes less than class. Negative 7. Um, but we generally leave our answers not as inequalities, but as intervals. How would I write this as an interval, um, Audrey? Negative seven, well, parentheses, um, comma. I'm sorry, do what? Um. <laughs> <laughs> um. Obviously, negative is the key point. Does it go big or go small? Small. small. small, so. Negative infinity. Negative infinity. There we go. And uh, how many have that answer for number one? Questions on number one. Yes, ma'am. I had it. Oh, that was a late energy. Okay. Sorry. Questions those who did not got it. <laughs> Questions? All right, let's take a look at number dose. Um, again, we could divide away the eight or we could distribute the eight. Um, presuming we distributed Genesis? Yeah. To get? <coughs> 80 is less than 120. And then Kendall? To get? And then Michael, you divide by eight to get one. X is less than one. How would we write that as an interval, though? Genesis. Parentheses one, comma, uh, infinity. Now is X bigger than one? Are we going from one to going bigger or going smaller, though? Smaller. Uh, so we actually start with. Infinity. Well, if we go smaller, we're going down not to infinity, negative infinity. Negative infinity. There we go. One. Oh, I mean. Parentheses. <laughs> it's a Friday. You know, we're all, we're all, yeah, brains are like shot. All right, how many got this answer, though, on number two? Brain wasn't in a shot last night. <clears throat> okay, Maddie, questions on these? I just don't have any Okay, so you got this, just forgot to do the interval notation. Okay? Uh, number five, one is less than or equal to r plus three is less than or equal to five. Really straightforward on this one, Audrey. Everywhere to get. <clears throat> That less than or equal to? R and then less than or equal to 2. And so as an interval. Um, parentheses, no, it's brackets. Um, negative 2, comma 2, bracket. And there we go. Uh, number 6, what do we have to do everywhere, Brandon? Subtract the 4. To get? <coughs> negative 2 is less than or equal to B is less than or equal to B. And then as an interval, Abby. Uh, very similar to the last one. How many got five and six <coughs> correct? Questions on five and six. All right, turn to the page. Now let's get to the quadratic inequalities. Those are what we were working on yesterday. And I said that just like when you solve an, an inequality, a normal one, right? You solve it just like an equation except that one small difference, right? And flipping the inequality if you divide by a negative. With the quadratic inequality, we solve it just the same as we would a quadratic. We set it equal to, or not equal, but equal to zero. zero. Then we 
factor, set each factor equal to zero, and we solve, right? But when we get our answers, for instance, on number 11, I assume we brought the 20 class over as a negative. I assume we factor to get C and C positive, negative, five and four. We set each of those equal to zero, and we got C is equal to negative five and positive four, but we're not done. In an equation, we're done. There are my answers. Negative five is a value, four is a singular value as well, two singular values. But for a quadratic, these aren't actually my answers class, they are my separator points. So the critical points, I call them separator points, you'll remember what they're there for, but they're there to separate the number line into different sections. We've got a negative five here, we've got a positive four here, and correction, this should not be solid dots, this should be open circles. And those two points divide the number line class into three sets of values, three ranges of values. The first range is everything down here. How would I describe this range of values, Maddie? Um, uh, the, um, parentheses thing, uh, negative three, negative five, negative five. Good, negative infinity to negative five. Then the next set is everything in between Genesis. Um, parentheses. Negative three, negative five, zero. Well, everything in this range here. So the first range is everything down this way. The next range is everything in here in between these two points. In between these two points, right here. Negative five and four. There we go, negative five and four. Now zero is a point in that range, but negative five and four are the division points. So Genesis, staying with you, what would my last set of values be? Four, or parentheses four. Infinity. There we go. So we've got negative infinity up to the negative 5. Then we've got between the negative 5 and 4, and then finally the 4 to infinity. And uh, the question is, which 1 or 2 or 3? Probably not. Or none? Probably not. Probably 1 or 2 will work. Uh, but which of these ranges will actually work? Well, I said what we'll do is we'll pick a not so random, like negative 23.8, um, but uh, a value that's somewhere in the range. So something smaller than a negative 5 to be a test value, class. Maybe mm. negative 6 is what I heard, all right? And so we'll test it and see if it works. Something between negative 5 and 4, class. Zero. I use a zero any chance I can because I'm lazy. And then something bigger than 4, class. Ten. 10. All right, so if we square a negative 6, class, 36, 36 plus a negative 6 is less than 20. No, it's not. All right? Zero plus zero is less than 20. Yes. yes. Uh, 10 squared plus 10 is less than 20. All right, we've got our answer. And it's only the values that are between negative 5 and 4. How many got this answer on number 11? Questions on 11. Let's take a look at number 12. We've got an a squared. Positive 18a is less than negative 72. And walk me through what we need to do here, Kendall. Okay. And then factor. All right. Um, we get a plus 12 and a plus 6. Great job. And then? We set each equal to 0 to get a is equal to negative 6 and negative 5. All right. But we don't stop here. What I recommend is drawing a number line. Okay, we don't necessarily have to. For instance, if you know, well, my smaller value class is... So I'm going to start at and come up to my smaller value. And then I'm going to go from my smaller value to my bigger value. And then I'm going to go from the bigger value all the way to, and my last range would be. What I found most students do better if they can picture it on a number line, but you don't have to do that. The other advantage of the number line is I've had students get confused when they try to skip the number line. Like, well, what is the value in this range? Like negative 10 in this range? Well, is it class? No, negative 12, 13, 40, 50. No, negative 10 isn't in here, right? So sometimes it's just helpful to see the number line. That said, are you required to draw the number line? No, no, you're not. Uh, we could do it this way as well. In the case of here's my range here, here's my other range, and there's the final range, okay? So if picturing it is good for you, you need it, by all means, draw the number line. I usually will on the chalkboard for your benefit. 
What is a number we might pick that's somewhere in this less than negative 12 range? Negative 20. Negative 20. I can't go with my negative 10. I usually go with, but negative 20 is not too bad. How about something between negative 12 and negative 6? Negative 10 is an easy number to use. And then something between negative 6 and infinity? Zero. zero might be a good number to use. Oh, let's go with zero first. All right, zero squared plus 18 times zero is less than negative 72? No, because no, zero is bigger than negative 72. All right, square the negative 10, 100, and then negative 10 times 18 is 100 minus 180 less than negative 72. Yeah, not by much, but it is. And then uh, negative 20, when you square it, 400, negative 20 times 18, negative 360, and is 400 minus 360 less than negative 72? Also, no. So we're going to go just with that middle range, the negative 12 to negative 6. How many have that on number 12? All right, questions on this? Questions? All right, let's take a look at number 13. We've got an r squared, positive 12, r less than or equal to 28. Again, bring the 28 over class as a negative 28 backwards. Yes, okay, I was for a minute there. I was thinking 4 and 7 doesn't give me a 12, but I don't need 4 and 7 class. I'm going to go with a positive and a negative. And my numbers are going to be 14, positive 14, negative 2. So my two critical points are negative 14 and positive 2. All right? Quick number line. 2, negative 14 way down here somewhere. Solid dots this time. Um, everything in here, everything up there, or everything down here. How would I describe my first range of values, Genesis? Negative three, negative 14. Print. And then here, because of the bracket, the, uh, or equal to, we'll go with the uh, bracket. Then the next range of values, Maddie. And then the final range of values. Um, we'll not call her. She's busy dying and gagging back there. Michael? Bracket two. There, way to help your sister out by answering for her. <laughs> Do you go get a drink of water? I have water. I have water. It's okay. Right. Well, I'm glad you're okay. All right. Uh, <laughs> so we need to pick a value uh, that is smaller than negative 14, class. Negative 20. I like negative 20 again. Uh, something between negative 14 and 2? Zero. Zero. And uh, something bigger than 2? Okay, all right. Um, uh, let's start with zero. I like zero best. Uh, zero plus zero is less than 28. Now, by now, we might have caught on. Remember yesterday, it seemed like all of our answers were the two outward ranges. It seems like so far, these answers keep being all of the inner range. Will we ever see an outer and an inner work together? Not on a quadratic. See what I said? meaning squared is the highest power. We'll look at other ones where we will get adjacent ranges sometimes, but not in a quadratic. So as soon as this middle one works, I really don't think the outer two will work. Okay, that's, I think that's a good way to check your answer. If you get side-by-sides working in a quadratic, that's probably something went wrong. Uh, either the critical points are wrong or your testing is wrong. Something's not right. But again, I would use that as a check unless I'm like, all right, when we finish it up in the next minute, Okay, okay, just circle either the middle, you know, test the middle. If it works, go with it. If it doesn't, circle the two outers and move on. You soon get done. But um, if you have the time, I would use that just to, does this make sense? Does this seem right? Let's go and test the 10 here. Square it, and then times the 12. 100 on 120 is less than 28? Certainly not. So I'm really not expecting this to work either, but let's test it. We square it, 400. We multiply by its positive 12, negative 240. 400 minus 240 is still not less than 20, which is what we expected. As soon as that middle range worked, I expected the outer ranges not to. Good to check all three of them, though, just to make sure I didn't screw up. How many got that for number 13? Questions? All right, dropping down number 15 here. A little bit more involved problem this time, which is good because they were starting to get boring. Um, I wouldn't want you to be bored. All right. And after that very rough looking R. Um, so what do we need to do here? Audrey's laughing at me. Audrey, your turn. <laughs> um, this should be on the right side. All right, so I'm going to keep the 4R squared negative 252 is greater than? Negative 4R squared positive 6R. All right, then what should I do? Audrey. Um, you can 
Which one? Uh, like the, this forearm? Yeah, the negative forearm. Yeah. There's an R squared on both sides. You don't want that. Move the little one. So let's move the little one over, and that gives us eight R squared. Stop looking, Kendall Brandon. That's not nice. No. And then we'll bring over <laughs> the uh, positive six R to get <laughs> negative six R. We're gonna leave the negative two hundred fifty-two right where it is. Though, um, before I go trying to factor that, because that looks ghastly, there is something I could do to make it a little easier. I could divide away a 2. It's not going to do much for me, but I'm, I, anything, right? Divide everything, even a 0, by 2. And what does this become now, Audrey? 4 3 All right. Still not a whole lot of help. All right, so let's, uh, all right, let's do this. 4R um, squared probably... Is there a problem? Um, it's, it's, it's a 2R squared? It's negative 2R. That's a negative 2R squared. Did you say negative 2 or Did she say negative 2 and I just wrote the wrong? So why didn't you say something? Because you want to sit there and laugh at me. It's, you're evil. All right. <laughs> Let's say a negative 2R squared. Thank you. Where would we be without Abby? We'd be getting the wrong answer here. I was starting to get really discouraged by this factoring, too. I was going to wait. You're a what? slob, right? <laughs> All right. Slob. Michael's like, I didn't notice anything. All right. All right. See, I like you still. All right. Um, so we bring it over and it gives you a 6R squared, right? Yeah. And uh, so we actually, I'm betting that divides by 6, and it does. All right. So we can actually divide everything by a 6. Let's go with that. I think I'm going to like that better. Um, she didn't do that, though. No. Um, R squared. Okay. I figured you had that one. Um, Negative, uh, 42. 42. Greater than zero. Ah, oh, okay, now that we can do. That, that's easy, right? And so now we can factor it into... R and I. R squared, negative 6 and 7. There we go. And so my two critical values for R are going to be what here, Audrey? Negative 6 and 7. All right, how many had those critical values? Negative 6 and positive 7 for this one. All right, questions. Don't, don't hesitate, especially when it is this obvious there's a common 6 to divide the 6 out. It does help to actually have a 6 there. Thank you, Abby. Um, and open circles this time. All right, how would we describe our three ranges here? Let's go to Kendall. Um, we're negative infinity, negative 6. Good. Um, and then... Positive sign? Okay. And then 7, 2, infinity. Oh, that's an infinity. It just doesn't look like it. It's a very lousy infinity. Stop it. <laughs> All right. Um, infinity. What? It's a great infinity. Thank you, Michael. <laughs> You're a kiss up, but you know, whatever. All right. All right. Um, easiest test value in the world to use is a zero, which happens to fall in the middle range. Let's test it. All right, so this obviously becomes nothing. And, uh, you know, let's go here. Let's go where it was already distributed. So this becomes nothing, and that becomes nothing. All right, is negative 252 bigger than nothing? No. No. Ah, okay, so in that case, I'm expecting both outer ranges to work. Does that make sense? Let's try a, uh, a positive 10 here and a negative 10 there. Start with the positive 10. You square a positive 10, of course, class. 100 times 4. 400 minus 252 is going to be like 150-ish, right? Too lazy to even do the math, right? But it's going to be about 150-ish. All right, square the 10, 100 times negative 2, negative 200. And I'm only going to add 6 times 10 in order. So it's still going to be really negative, but over here I'm still really positive. So it's really positive bigger than really negative. Yeah. And there are times you can cheat the system like that and not actually do all the math. And if we do the negative 10, the same thing is going to happen. This is still going to be really positive over here. This is going to be really negative, and that's going to make it even more negative. It's still going to check. So more of an illustration, okay, if you feel like I probably screw that up. Okay, then don't do it, but we talk about lazy. If you're good with numbers, you're good at estimating numbers, just kind of throw ishes out there, especially if you get far away from these values. For instance, negative 10 has a good bit of clearance. If you go with negative 7, you might be a little too close for comfort if you estimate. 8 might be a little close for comfort. The further away from those critical points, the more you kind of estimate your numbers. 
Um, but how many did have the outer ranges? Negative infinity to negative six, seven to infinity working on this one. Assume those who had the critical points correct. Obviously, if you didn't have those, no chance on that. Uh, let's look at number 16. Finally, as we finish out the homework, we have 5x squared, negative 64, plus 7x squared is less than 2x times 7x negative 12. And uh, make sure I listen carefully as we're told what to copy down here as we simplify. Michael, my favorite student. All right. I'm going to work from the board. <laughs> You're going to distribute the 2x to get 14x squared and negative 24x. Mm -hmm. And then you're going to add the 7x squared and 5x squared, and that gives you 12x squared. Um, you're going to leave the 64, just move it down. Yeah. Um, you, you <laughs> I'm working half of this in my head. Um, just erase the 12x squared. Just erase the 12x squared, and then erase the 14 and put it 2. Yep. And you basically pick up the eraser. And then you're going to move the 64 over to the right side, giving you a positive 64. Yep. Yep. <laughs> and then we're gonna divide it all by two. Oh, I do. Mm -hmm. And that gives you. Let's see. X <laughs> plus. Don't mess that one up. <laughs> minus twelve x plus thirty two. Then you got factor. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then we can do eight and four. X and x. And we can do negative negative. Yeah. You set it to zero. Mm -hmm. Oh, I see. I got it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that gives you four and eight. We're switching. And yeah, now we got to do the things. <laughs> <laughs> and you get negative parentheses negative infinity, uh, comma four, parentheses four comma eight, parentheses yeah close parentheses oh, parentheses um eight comma um, infinity. Yeah. Um. Then we gotta check them. Okay. We can do um. Zero and oh, that's a lot. That's great. Negative six. <laughs> I'm trying to do all this. Check, check. Yeah. Oh, so you're checking the zero right now. You're not giving me other values. We're ready to I'm, check this. I'm okay. checking the zero. All right. So we check the zero. What comes on on this side? Um, negative six four. Right. Because so anything with an x disappears. Um. And what about on this side? Zero. Yeah, of course. Because you put a zero, they're going to distribute it. Of course, it's going to be a zero. So no. <laughs> Negative 64 is it less than zero? <laughs> Genesis is just shaking her head. She looks so sad for you. <laughs> I'm sad for myself. You can circle that one. All right. So do we expect the next next range to work? No. We, we don't really don't. Well, let's <laughs> pick a number anyway. Six. Yeah. All right. Here we go. Thirty-six times five. Let me get my calculator. Okay. Oh yeah. <laughs> then we go with um, minus 64, then 7 times 36 is, we'll go with like 250. Then we got that. <laughs> and this becomes a? Uh, two, <laughs> 2 times 6? 12. 12. 12. All right. And then <laughs> this becomes? 7 times 6, which is 42. Minus 12. 42 minus 12 is 30. Times 12. Yeah, that is, um, <laughs> I don't know. Let's What's 3 times 12? 360. All right. <laughs> so if we put all this together, is it going to be a what? Ooh, that's no. really too close for me to know. Okay, no, so we not. add this. That's like 120-ish, right? Mm -hmm. It's like 370, so that's pretty close. What does it actually come to? Calculator. No, no, I just crossed it out. <laughs> 368. 368. Well, I didn't, that didn't miss by much. Okay, but 368 is not less than 360, so uh, it is indeed a no-go. So what do we expect to happen over here, class? We're really confident this is going to check. But, you know, just to make sure. Inquisitor test. We have a little extra time. We want to make sure we get the sticker. Let's try a 10. Because um, if we square a 10 both times, we're getting what? Hundreds. Hundreds, right? So this is going to be, you know... 500. And that's going to be, 700. so that's like 1,200 minus 64, which I'm not even going to do. All right, and then over here, this becomes a 20, 20 which has to be multiplied by uh, 70 minus 12. Oh, I don't know. 58. Yeah. And uh, we're going to multiply 58 by 20. Calculator. Oh, man, that's going to be too close to it, isn't it? 1,160. 
right. And uh, well, when we subtract 64, 1,136. So again, not much smaller, but it is smaller, and it does check out. How many have the negative infinity to 4 and the 8 to infinity for this one? All right, aren't you thankful for calculators? All right, questions on this? Edge seat, student number 14. Edge seat, student 14. And uh, Brecken and Gavin, in case you're wondering why Michael is my favorite student, he put money in the stocking. And uh, so I know you don't want to feel left out. So I do take PayPal um, if you're wanting to, uh, to send cash donations electronically <laughs> by a large shipment of Reese's and have it sent to my address. If parents send me an email, I'll be happy to give you my address via email, but I will not put it out on YouTube directly. person I don't even know. Yeah, I was watching your video on YouTube. I'd like to send you $100. I'd just have your bank account information, your social security number, and your PIN code. <laughs> Brecken's like, I was going to do that too. <laughs> Thank you, Brecken. Merry Christmas. <laughs> My former favorite student. <laughs> wow. <laughs> All right, uh, flip back to page 141. All right, these have been quadratics. But of course, we can go beyond quadratics, right? Like, we haven't stopped at quadratics with equations. Why should we stop with quadratics on, say, inequalities? For instance, you look at uh, page 141. That might be slightly terrifying that the problem takes an entire page. Uh, but anyway, um, we're going to work it anyway. Nothing daunted. Um, <laughs> And uh, we've got uh, this inequality. Well, this, of course, isn't quadratic, right? It's a higher power. It's the cubic, uh, which means we're not expecting two separator points, class. What am I expecting? Three separator points, right? And um, if this were an equation, I would see if I could factor by grouping, but I can't. Um, so the next thing I would see is the PQ method, right? Where uh, the first number I always like to try in the PQ method is positive one. Positive one. All right, so we plug in a one. one. Does that equal zero? Yes. It does. Now, again, you're checking for an equal zero, even if it says greater than, less than, right? If you're always looking for equal zero, the one checks out. Okay, so one is one of my separator points. Does that make sense? And then, of course, we will uh, do the synthetic division. Since it happened to be a 1, these happen to also be all the coefficients we had before. We'll bring down the 1 class. 1 gives us 5, gives us, gives us, gives us. And, of course, that gives us the 0 to make sure we really got it. We'll plug in the x squared, the x. And now that it's quadratic class, now we can factor. Right? Just the same thing we were just doing with equations. x and x, positive, positive. 3 and 2, that does check out. So that means my other separator points now are, and of course, 1. 3 separator points means how many ranges on the number line now? 4. So here's my 0. I've got the or equal to. I've got a separator point at 1, at negative 2, at negative 3, and that's it. So how would I describe my three ranges here? Maddie? Um, a bracket, 
like negative two comma one and then a bracket and then and then do parentheses. So that means four test values, right? Um, let's pick something bigger than one. Two. Well, I'm going to start cubing stuff. Um, let's try two. <laughs> something between negative two and one. Zero. Zero. <laughs> negative two and a half. <laughs> uh, calculators at the ready. And then something smaller than negative three. Negative four, I guess. All right, let's start with zero. Um, bam, bam, bam. Is negative six greater than zero? There goes that one. Uh, by the way, usually two of these will work. Uh, let's try a two. Cube it. Square it times four. And of course, that's just a two minus six is greater than or equal to zero. Yes. I'm going to save that negative two and a half. All right, let's try the negative four. Cube it. Negative 64. Negative 64. Square it times 4. 64. Positive 64. And then it gives us negative 4, negative 6 is greater than or equal to 0? No. 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 Well, again, normally you're going to get two ranges to work. So if it's me, I'm gambling. <laughs> then since this one did, this one didn't, this one didn't, alternate ranges work and alternate don't. If you want to test the negative 2.5, um, be my guest. I'm lazy. I'm going to say it works. And it does. Um, questions on this. <laughs> My laziness. Hey, but if you're smart, you can be lazy, right? If you know two ranges should work, it's either outsides or insides or alternate, right? There's three ways you could pattern it. But you're not going to get these two and not those two. Okay, so it'll be outsides possibly, insides possibly, or alternate ranges, or alternate ranges. Okay, so the way the other three fell, I got to save myself the trouble with the fraction, and I'm very thankful. Questions? All right, uh, turn the page. Let's uh, turn two pages, excuse me. And uh, let's take a look at number 18. We got a g cubed, <coughs> positive 7, g squared, positive 14, g positive 8 is greater than 0. I would love to do factoring by grouping, but class yeah. can't. Um, so, um, here we're cubed. And the first value we always try is, mm -hmm. but not this time, why not? Any positive I plug in is not going to be equal to zero. Agreed? So I'm not going to try any positives. Let's try negative one. Try negative one plus I get. Negative one plus seven minus fourteen plus eight. True or false? True. All right. So put the negative one in the half box, and then one, seven, fourteen, eight get copied down. Again, I had to doctor it for the original plug. And by the way, y'all see, understand what I'm talking about when I say don't even bother plugging in a positive? Mm -hmm. All right. Break down the one. Then multiply to get. Add. So besides just add, multiply. Add. Multiply. Add. Multiply. Add. That's just a confirmation that it does indeed work. Let's plug in the g squared and the g factor. One, two. G plus 4, G plus 2, which means I already have negative 1 as a separator point. What are my other two separator points, Kendall? Negative 1 and negative 2. You're doing this with me, remember. Uh, and um, so three separator points means how many ranges on the number line class? Four. Four different sets of values. Let's see what happens. There's zero. Actually, <clears throat> I'm going to shift to zero, a little further up the number line. All right, um, open circle at negative one, open circle at negative two, open circle at negative four. What are my three ranges of values, Brandon? Or four ranges of values, what are they? Uh, parentheses, negative one, comma, negative four, parentheses, parentheses, negative four, comma, negative two, parentheses, parentheses, negative two, comma, negative one, parentheses, parentheses, negative one, comma, negative one. All right. Um, if I were to test this first range here, class, I would pr try, for instance, negative five, negative five here, negative three. here, negative one, negative one and a half or negative three halves, and here, zero. zero. Which one am I going to start with? Zero. You know it. Okay. <laughs> nothing, nothing, nothing plus 80 is greater than zero. Yes. All right. Let's do five. I'm already really sure, because if we do alternates, this isn't going to work, right? 
And if I do insides or outsides, it's still not going to work. So let's not even bother with this. Let's try negative 3. Cube of negative 3. Square it times 7. Just multiply by 14. And add 8. And is that greater than 0? Just barely. Yeah, 71 minus 69 is 2. All right, so this just barely works. So we're going to alternate again. So should I expect this to work? But I'm going to check it just to make sure. Just to make sure I didn't get something off. Okay, so let's try the negative 5 real quick. Negative 5 cubit. All right, square times 7. Um, multiply by negative or positive 14. And then add 8. And is it bigger than 0? So we have calculators, right? No. No calculator. Okay. <laughs> oh, I was, I was saying no. Oh, no, it doesn't. It's not, it doesn't work. Okay, and we didn't expect it to, but it's good to check. That also confirms that this one should not work, and there are my answers. Questions on this? All right. Drop all the way down to 24. Something weird happens on 24. Just looking at it, it's a quartic. How many, um, how many separator points are we expecting? Four. How many ranges? Five. Is what you'd expect. But this one gets weird. In a simpler way, though. So it's weird, but it ends up being simpler on the front end. Because the first thing we always check when we factor, of course, it's already said equal to zero, is a common factor, which here is going to be good, negative 3n squared. And we factor out that negative 3n squared, we end up getting what in parentheses? n squared. Negative. Yeah, sign number letter, right? And uh, you know, it's been a little while since we've uttered that phrase, but it's a good reminder for us, a sign number letter, and a little backwards foil. Um, Five, two, <laughs> I should have called on one person, my bad. All right, you know, you lose some, you lose some. Anyways. All right, now here's where it gets interesting. Obviously, here we see a separator point's going to be negative two. Here we see a separator point's going to be positive three. Here, I get two separator points, but they're both zero. So for all practical purposes, it's one separator point. Kind of weird, all right? So um, let's take a look here at my ranges of values. I've got um, zero here, three here, and negative two. Now the other thing that's really sad is because zero is a separator point, I can't use it as a test value necessarily. That's a real bummer. Um, so my ranges of values, of course, we've got the uh, closed dot here. I've got from negative infinity, you're doing this with me, to negative 2. I've got negative 2 to 0. 0 to 0 is technically the next range. Or you could just say 0. 0 to 3. 3 to infinity. Do you see how I do have five ranges, but one of my ranges is 0 to 0. Now, because it's in brackets, that would work. Can you imagine if this didn't have the or equal to? <laughs> zero to zero, but not either zero or zero. That wouldn't even make any sense, right? So if it had parentheses here, we wouldn't even bother. But, right, but because of the or equal to, we'll test it out. I'm going to start with that in fact. Zero plus zero plus zero is greater than or equal to zero, class? Yes. Yes, of course it is. Um, all right, let's try uh, can you zero. Um, let's go with a 1 right here between 0 and 3. What do we get when we plug in just a straight 1? Is greater than or equal to 0? Yes. This one works. Hmm. All right, let's try um, a 4. Oh, Calculator is ready. 4 to the 4th. 256 times negative 3. Negative 768. That's what I was saying, negative 768. Okay. Uh, cube the 4 times 3, and then square the 4, I can't do this one in my head, times 18, I give up. <laughs> 288. 288. All right, is that greater than or equal to 0? 
No. no, these two are not big enough to compensate for a negative 760, so this does not work. This is kind of weird. Okay, let's try the zero to negative two. Let's try a negative one. You raise it to the fourth, though, it becomes positive, positive one times negative three, negative three, negative three. You cube the negative one negative times positive three, negative three, and then negative one when you square it, positive. times 18, positive. still positive 18. Is that greater than or equal to zero? So that range works. And then we try uh, maybe a negative three. Now at this point, I'm not really thinking that this is gonna work, because I've already got three little ranges working. Well, let's try it anyway, because it's already been a weird problem. Raise it to the fourth, times negative three. Cube it, negative 27, times positive three. Negative, negative 81, and then square the negative 3 mm -hmm. times 18. Is that greater than or equal to 0? Yeah. No. But look at my answer. Think about, picture this. From negative 2 up to the 0, the 0, and 0 to 3. Do you realize that's literally just all these points here? Three consecutive, I mean, if you want to count zero as a separate range, three consecutive ranges, or you could say the two inner ranges both work. But we might as well just call it negative two to three. A little bit weird there, because you ended up with a squared variable out here where there was that double weird range thing. Questions on this? All right, your turn. I want you to do number 20 at your seats. Number 20. finished and everything looks good, go on to 21. You're good, do 21.
questions, ask when you get to them. Anyone still working on 20? All right, take your time. We are just about out of time. So I did want to take a look very quickly. Even if you didn't have a chance to get here, go over number 21 with me here. We factor out the x squared. We backwards FOIL. We get positive, negative, zero. So zero and zero as two of my roots, negative or uh, separator points, and then negative four and one. But because of the parentheses, from zero to zero in parentheses, I can already rule that out, right? So don't even worry about that. I don't really want to test a one half. I don't mind testing a two, a negative one, yeah, negative 5, whatever. So if I try a 2, 16, 24, minus 16 is bigger than 0, that range should work. If I try, let me try the negative 1 next. That's still 1, that's negative 3, that's negative 4, that's not going to be bigger than 0. I try negative 5, 625, um, negative 375, and negative 100, that is still greater than zero. So I got these two ranges to work. Do I anticipate this one working? I'm going to be lazy and say it doesn't, and it doesn't, and there's my answers. Anyone able to finish 20, uh, 21? Some of you were. All right, questions, last call for questions here on whatever number this was, 20. All right, homework for this evening is to do page 144. You're going to do three of these. Page 144, the practice at the top of the page, numbers 19, 22, and 23. Page 144, the practice, 19, 22, 23. And then at the bottom of the page, going to do some review problems as well. Um, some stuff that we'd seen on our last test. Once you do numbers 2, 3, 5, 10, 12, 14, and 15. So nine equations total. Three of what we were just doing, then six review equations, or seven review questions, I can't, I can't count. The review numbers two, three, five, 10, 12, 14, and 15. Have a wonderful rest of your day, have a wonderful weekend. You are dismissed.